Welcome to Budo Fighting Championships. I'm Jamie the Haymaker. Hey, here with Jay the Blast Furnace on our on our way to our first contest here, Jay. Yeah, looking forward to this one, Jamie. Sharon Troop. Uh, I've seen him for a lot of years. The, you know, really good high-level striker. She absolute, looks absolutely wicked hitting the pads. I know she's uh, got a bit more experience than Kelly as well, but Kelly looks an absolute tank there. Same thing, leg kicks from Troop. The longer range of girl. Oh, a nice little left hook on the way in to work away in, though, for uh, Stadden. Gotta watch out back with that sort of judo style takedown there. Yeah, I, I mean, I did wonder from the stature and, um, of Kelly. I thought she'd be coming in to try and close this on straight away, and she did just that. Shannon's done a good job of getting back up to her feet, though, and as you say, there's always the potential there with that sort of head and arm type throw that you get your back taken. And Shannon was uh, savvy to it. She's almost worked her way back, but I think Kelly's just going to secure the position there on the fence. Shannon, part of the higher level team from over in Scotland. We've got a busy night tonight and we've had a few different shows around the uh, around the country. Good job from Shannon there to turn her back off the fence. Drives in a knee to the body. As you say, two very different body types, Jamie. You've got uh, Shannon, she's taller and ranger, and that's, you know, often when you see this striker versus grappler dynamic, sometimes, you know, you see that taller ranger striker and the stockier uh, grappler. Definitely the situation tonight. Finally gets that take that she's looking for. Let's see what Troop can do from the bottom here. But can you use that cage now to potentially work her way back up now, Jay? Yeah, she certainly could. She's holding on. If she uh, let go of that left arm, trying to put upon the left elbow and left hand, to try and force her way back up the cage. She's going for a different tact of holding her opponent in and, and maybe trying to force her to stand up that way instead of uh, posting her way back up. Getting back up, climbing up, using the fence, you know, there is always that risk there. You're going to take a few shots to get up. Uh, Shannon opting instead to try and hold her in and maybe force the referee to, to make him stand up there. Just noticed on the back of that leg there where she took a couple of leg kicks early on, there's a massive red welt on that left leg. Yeah, damage early from, uh, from Shannon there, but Kelly, she looks really strong from the top, doesn't look like being budged. She's got a good... Uh, she had a good cross face there. Little shots coming in now. I was just about to say she needs to be a little bit busier to maintain this position, but as I say that, she starts dropping some right hands in. Just short shots, but enough for the referee to see that she's being active. Funny how she was happy to stay in that sort of half guard position, didn't even want to step over, which I don't blame against that fence. It's usually a good position to be working with them strikes, them shots. And now she's got the knee on Belly J. She can start to put some strikes down from here. She needs to posture up a little bit and try and drop that right hand down the pipe. Yeah, she might be looking for an armbar on the near side. Shannon just gets it out, looking for a leg. A lot tougher and in the she... amateur rankings, though. Oh, a good one, too, from Shannon. It was enough to scare Kelly enough to create space so that Shannon could get up. Shannon sort of closed her own distance in there. You know, I'd like to see her in the second round potentially use that range a little bit more. Another head and arm throw. I mean, I'm not, I'm not 100% certain of uh, Kelly's background, but... If that's not a giveaway that she's got a judo background, then... Yeah, not what is? is? Yeah, exactly. Good first round there for Kelly. Yeah, she's controlled much of that first round. You can clearly see that, you know, Shannon's got sharp strikes. There's just a couple of things, uh, you know, on the ground. I'd, I'd be telling her to look for a little bit more urgency rather than trying to hold and tie, tie Kelly up from the bottom. Kelly will be happy to be sort of chest to chest and working close from the top position. Shannon really needs to be creating frames, creating space, and trying to use a bit of urgency to get back to her feet a little bit faster. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Shannon keep on, like I say, keep it a little bit more rangy for this round, not rush in with anything and not allow that range to be broken either. So to keep on the end of either that jab or, you know, the problem is them leg kicks that she's going to start throwing, that's an easy way for to, to then sort of close that distance and take a couple, a couple of kicks on the way in, and then you can pretty much cover it off. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Shannon's probably one, one round down uh, but she showed at the start of the first round that you know she has got good potential in her strikes and she has been able to work her way back up to her feet as well. So all's not lost and there's still a long time to go in this fight. Round two of a possible three today. Yeah. Troop versus Stadden. 
Another good hard load kick lands there, and you can see the thigh across the uh, the shin across the thigh already starting to mark it up, as you mentioned. And now Kelly trying to go, find a way in behind the hands, trying okay. to cut Shannon off. Yeah, doing well to cut off rather than chase down there. It was another good low kick, but Kelly counted it with the right hand, and that was enough again to close the distance and drive away into the fence. He's very, very clear that you know Stadham wants to get this against the fence and really sort of work that pressure game, and it's working so far, Jay. Yeah, she clearly feels comfortable there. You know, out in the open, eating up them low kicks, getting that lead leg chewed up. You know, if you're getting that done to your leg all night, you're not going to feel, you're not going to be enjoying it. That was a good knee from uh, from Shannon, but again, if she could turn to her left there and take a circle with her left leg and get a pivot with her right leg, she might be able to get her back off the fence and turn out. But Kelly looks really strong, like upper body wise, she does look real physically strong. Yeah, it's a good stature, like you say, for the wrestling base and the judo base that she's clearly got. And, you know, working up against the fence now, uh, she's keeping her head quite wide, but you can afford to do that in the amateur ranks because you're not going to get knee to the head. Yeah, it goes for the hip throw again. Shannon, they're again trying to get out to the back, but you can't get past the underhook, so that's what's prevented her from getting out to the back. Good pressure. Could be setting up a head and arm from there already on the top. Shannon needs to get her elbow back, but the cage is sort of preventing her from getting her elbow all the way back. Yeah, her left leg's crossed over along the body, so she's going to probably struggle to get that back. Yeah, awkward but, position, yeah, I just noticed the lower body there. But she can definitely put some pressure on from the top. She has got to be careful now to have that back taken at some point, though, but the underhook, as you said, Jay, is stopping that, that back take at the minute. Yeah, at this point, she's got to take her a bit of a risk one way or the other, try and slide that right knee free. It is a bit of a potential of opening up the back. If she's strong with her underhook, she'll be all right. But otherwise, it's, she's going to struggle to get that leg out unless Shannon opens up. But at the same time, you know, Shannon needs to be opened up. She can't spend much uh, any, any longer being flat on her back like this because she let one round slip away from her in the first round, being stuck underneath for too long. And if that happens again, I'd suggest she really needs to be, rather than locking her opponent up, maybe trying to find some hooks to try and create some space instead. Yeah, we're certainly seeing that now. This, this round is starting to slip away as well, so that's going to be two rounds to, to zero on the judges' cards, and it's going to be all, all for, for uh, Shannon Troop to do now in this uh, latter end of this fight. Yeah, that upper body strength with the underhook from Kelly. She chips away with the right hand just enough, but she's got a good enough control of that left arm that Shannon's not able to slide far enough out to her right to be able to free herself. And with 10 seconds left, there's not going to be much time for her to mount any offence to try and claw this second round back. And I think it's close around, Jamie, because, you know, Shannon did land some, uh, some good hard low kick to start the round, but to spend too much of that round with a back stuffed against the fence and a back on the mat. You know, while Kelly didn't look like she was close to getting a finish, she's controlling the position, landing enough shots to stay there, keeping busy enough. And yeah, while it's, uh, well, Shannon's certainly not being blown out here, it's, uh, you'd have to say it'd be two rounds down, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd say so. I like, like you say there, Jay, you know, once that, that sort of pressure game comes in and you don't have enough uh, efficient striking early on, which, you know, there's a couple of good strikes in from Shannon, uh, you know, impressive movement to start with, but once she got closed off and closed down, she didn't look like she knew where to go with this, and once it hit the ground, it was pretty much, uh, you know, game over for that round, really. So we've got a third round now. I do believe she needs a finish in this round, but how does she get that finish? You know, we've not seen enough of that striking base yet. Yeah, so and if, far. yeah, she gets too uh, she gets too eager as well. Then obviously it leads you into the grappler's trap. You know, if you move forward too much, she's going to get underneath. She's going to see that. The referees take a look at the eye there, maybe. But we're good to go. Oh, yeah. good right hand from Shannon. That's what she needs. Kelly fires back though, back down on the gun shield. Another good right hand, it's a range from Shannon, really, finding a home. Yeah, that, that range on that right hand was wonderful there to start with, but she's not allowing it to close in now. She's got to be careful on leg kicks, OJ, that's where the closure will come from. Yeah, you can see Kelly trying to come in behind that low kick, but she's eating three or four of those. Oh, another good right hand from Shannon. This is much better. Yeah. Start to a round. And as she's landing the shot, she's retreating and taking herself out of range, and that's much better than what she did in the first two rounds. Get the shots in, and then retreat back out of the distance. As I say that, Kelly manages to tie her up with the underhook. Shannon trying. there, just, yeah, it's just a little bit too accepting of getting pushed to the fence. He's to try and get off that fence immediately, try and break that 
that control, but that, that left underhook for me is what's been doing it in this fight so far. I mean, if it carries on as it is, you know, Kelly might be the one limping tomorrow, but she'll be limping with an extra win on a record. It's going to need something drastic at this point for, uh, for Shannon, I think. Especially with it going to the ground pretty much now as well. I think once she locks horns every time she hits so far in this fight, she's, she's got her way. And Kelly really putting that pressure on again. That left underhook is he's, he's causing a lot of, lot of uh, problems for Shannon Troop. Yeah, Shannon looked excellent. That's, that's better work from her. Back off the fence and now if she can go hands on the hips and try and get her elbow out from that uh, overhook and get back to the fence. She doesn't want to stay on the fence from there because that's what happens with going back to the mat. Yeah, she's right in front of us now, and again, just that little bit of pressure with that sort of shoulder of justice there from Kelly from the top, putting a bit of pressure on her, making sure she knows that she's on top in this uh, latter part of this fight now. Yeah, potential for the head and arm this time. Kelly's pretty much passed, almost in a quarter guard position with that left knee, heads in the armpit. There's every chance she could try and set up this arm triangle now. She's passed the guard completely. And yeah, the position's still there. She's got that side control now. She may be got that knee on belly with that left knee and then start from front some strikes down. But at the minute, she could probably afford to just keep that control and not really have any further issues in this fight like she had at the start of this round. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, though, Jamie, knee on belly starts to slide over. She could, if she wanted to, you know, ride this out and be comfortable for the judges, but it looks like she wants to attack for the arm triangle. She's got the mount now, head still in the armpit. She's trying to separate it from, uh, from Shannon's body. She's putting that pressure in as well with that right shoulder yeah. into the head. She may start putting some strikes now. She may even start to look for a quick finish at the end of this fight now. Yeah, flurry of strikes. She realised the arm triangle wasn't there and decided to posture up instead. A couple of good shots coming down, and that's third round in the books. And, uh, yeah, a shake of the head there from Shannon. I think, you know... It's going to be a reasonably comfortable decision for uh, for Kelly there. Really good performance. Some really nice throws. Excellent ground control. Shannon had some real good moments, but too isolated and too few and far between, really. Some really good strikes in that third round. You know, we, we, as you mentioned with the start of the fight, Jay, you've seen her on the pads and she looks good. And you know what? She put it into practice there. But I think Kelly was just so tough. Didn't really didn't really phase it, did it? It kept on the back foot, but for about 20, 30 seconds. But once she got comfortable with them strikes, she found a way in. Uh, you know, missed a shot and then banged straight into it and, you know, took over that fight again in that third round. But much better round from Shannon, but just not enough. Absolutely. So, three rounds in, judges' scorecards collated. We're going inside the cage for the official decision in just a second.